This example here is a little bit more complicated. We're asked to simplify the third minus seven and then under the square root is 49 y to the power of five. So you see this algebraic part, that makes it a little bit more challenging. The minus seven will stay minus seven. Then we can break it up into the square root of the number 49. And then this more challenging part, the variable y to the power of five. So 49 we should recognize as a perfect square is seven squared. So negative seven times the square root of 49, which is positive seven. But y to the power of five, an odd power, if we could think about it as y squared times y squared, that would give us y to the power of four times y, that's like a y to the power of one, that would be y to the power of five. So, when we have a third, anything times itself can come out. So, y squared times y squared, the square root of that is y squared, and underneath there is still the square root of y. A negative number times a positive number, negative seven times positive seven is negative 49. So we have negative 49 y squared all outside of the, the third, and then underneath the third is still the y. Some other students might want to think about it as the odd power. So you could think, well, what's the biggest number that two divides into, or how many times does two divide into five? So negative seven times seven from the 49, and then y squared, because two goes into five twice, with the one left over. Okay, so either way that you can think about it, most of you will probably wanna write it out like this for the first while. In our second example, that is a little bit more complicated. There, you are asked to simplify the following thirds, follow, Fully leaving, simplify fully, right? Simplify the following thirds fully, leaving your answer in the form a root b over c. They like to ask the form where a, b, and c are integers, okay? Sometimes all this language, sorry, integers, all these symbols will throw you off a little bit, but they shouldn't. Essentially, the most important thing is that this is actually giving you a hint of what the answer is going to look like. Here, you had a number and expression, and then an expression underneath the square root. Here it tells you you're going to have a fractional answer, where in the numerator you have a square root. All right? So, try not, like, here you have the command term simplify, here you have simplify the following, and you have a hint. This hint, although complicated, is actually really quite useful. So here's your number outside, like the A, but this third goes over everything. So I'll show you two ways. First, let's simplify by thinking about the perfect square that divides into 200 is 100, 10 squared, and then that leaves you with two. So here's your root 200, divided by the square root of 64, breaking it apart. So now you have three times 10, square root of two on the numerator, and eight on the denominator. And you see we're getting closer to this form. So even though this one just said simplify, this one says simplify with a big hint of what your answer looks like. Three times 10 is 30 over eight. Again, how you simplify this fraction is up to you. Root two, right? 30 over eight reduces to 15 over four, root two. And then you see this hint here was handy because your answer, here's your A, here's your C, and here's your B.